Hello mga ka-learners! Kamusta kayo? Today, we will learn about the different classifications of animals. Look around you. How many kinds of animals do you see? Which of these animals belong to the same group? How do we separate animals into groups? This lesson will help you name some animals commonly found in your home and in your community. It will also teach you about animals that are grouped on the basis of structure, habitat, and food eaten. After this lesson, you should be able to identify the different classifications of animals based on their structure, size, habitat, and food eaten. There are so many animals on Earth. If we are to study all of them one by one, it will surely take us a very long time to do so. Thus, scientists have thought of ways of grouping animals in order to study them more systematically. One way of grouping animals is according to structure. Based on this classification, there are two types of animals, vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates. Do you know what vertebrates are? You are a vertebrate. So are most of the animals you often see in your environment, such as dogs, cats, birds, and fishes. Vertebrates are animals with backbones. What characteristics make vertebrates different? First of all, vertebrates have backbones. Look at this picture of a human skeleton. The backbone is part of the internal skeleton called endoskeleton. It is called an internal skeleton because it is found inside the body of the animal. The long column of bones that you see is the backbone. It is also known as the vertebral or spinal column. The bumps along the backbone from which spines stick out are the vertebrae. The number of vertebrae corresponds to the number of pairs of spines found along the backbone. Vertebrates have other characteristics that make them different from other animals. They have a closed circulatory system as opposed to the open circulatory system of other animals. In some insects, for instance, a very simple heart pumps blood out into the tissue of the animal. The blood passes through the tissues and collects again in the heart. On the other hand, vertebrates have a complex heart that pumps blood to all parts of the body. Vertebrates also have a well-developed nervous system. The nervous system of a vertebrate is made up of the brain, spinal cord, and nerve cells. The spinal cord is a bundle of nerves that extends from the base of the brain and is protected by the backbone. Vertebrates have larger and more developed brains compared to other animals. They also have well-developed sense organs, such as eyes and ears. Sorting the vertebrates You found out that humans, fishes, birds, dogs, frogs, and snakes are all vertebrates. But this large group of animals is further divided into groups. Thus, we have cold-blooded vertebrates and warm-blooded vertebrates. Cold-blooded vertebrates are ectothermic, that is, their body temperature changes with the temperature of their environment. Thus, when the environment is cold, these vertebrates become cool as well, and when their environment is hot, their body temperature goes up. Cold-blooded vertebrates include fishes, amphibians, and reptiles. Fishes are vertebrates that live in the water. They breathe through their gills. Reptiles are among the oldest organisms to have existed on Earth. In fact, scientists believe that reptiles were the first animals on Earth. Dinosaurs that lived millions of years ago were reptiles. Reptiles have dry, scaly skin. Because of this, their bodies do not dry out as fast as the bodies of the other cold-blooded invertebrates. Reptiles are divided into four groups. Snakes, turtles, crocodiles, and lizards. The crocodile group of reptiles includes alligators. Crocodiles live in water and have raised nostrils on their snouts that are connected to their lungs. Turtles live in shells that serve as their protection. They have strong, sharp beaks without teeth. There are sea turtles and land turtles or tortoises. The limbs of sea turtles serve as their flippers that help them swim. Snakes eat other animals for food. Snakes do not have limbs. They do not have ear openings either. 
They also have unusual jaws that enable them to swallow prey bigger than their mouths. Most lizards have four legs with five clawed toes on each foot. They range in size from 5 centimeters to around 3 meters long and can weigh as much as 140 kilograms. Amphibians are vertebrates that can live both on land and in water. Most amphibians undergo a series of body changes as they develop. These changes enable them to go from a water environment to a land environment. Amphibians are grouped into those with tails and those with no tails. Amphibians with tails include salamanders and newts. Amphibians without tails include frogs and toads. Meanwhile, warm-blooded vertebrates are endothermic. That is, their temperature remains constant no matter what the temperature of their environment is. There are two classes of warm-blooded vertebrates, birds and mammals. Birds are egg-laying vertebrates whose bodies are covered with feathers and whose forelimbs have been modified into wings. Bird eggs have hard shells unlike those of snakes, turtles, and lizards. Their bones are hollow and light, which makes it easier for them to fly. Birds have no teeth. Instead, their food is ground after they have swallowed it. Their feathers protect them against cold and wet and have great strength. Mammals are a class of vertebrates whose young are nourished with milk from their mother's mammary glands. All mammals except whales have hair. Mammals, like birds, have four chambered hearts. Many mammals can move fast because their legs are more directly under their bodies, unlike those of amphibians and reptiles. Mammals are divided into three groups, the monotremes, marsupials, and placentals. The monotremes are egg-laying mammals. There are very few monotremes since most mammals are born and not hatched from eggs. Included in this group are the spiny anteater and duck-billed platypus. They are found in faraway places such as Australia and New Guinea. Marsupials are mammals that develop their young in pouches. Their young are born, not hatched from eggs. Young marsupials develop for only a short time inside their mother's womb and when they are born, they are too weak and helpless to be left on their own. Hence, they crawl into their mother's pouches and attach themselves to the mammary glands of their mothers where they feed until they are strong enough. Kangaroos and koalas are marsupials. Both these animals are found in Australia. Placentals make up the largest group of mammals. Placentals are mammals that have placentas. The placenta is an organ inside their mother's body that allows food and oxygen to pass from the mother's blood into the embryo, the developing fetus inside the mother's womb. This allows the young to develop well inside the mother's womb. Hence, placentals are much stronger compared to marsupials and monotremes when they come out of their mother's wombs. Oh, mga ka-learners, wag muna kayong umalis ha? Stay tuned for part B of this lesson.